Today, we're going back to Clarksburg to learn more about the local history at the Clarksburg History Museum. We will meet up with the founder of the museum, Michael, a great guy, for a tour of the museum. And later, we will meet up with the historian, Rick, to learn more about the Confederate General Stonewall Jackson. Let me know what you guys liked about the museum and leave your comments below. So this is also from this area, right? Yes. Before television, you know, most everyone had a radio like that. I don't know if it was like that in China or not, but like when my parents were growing up, uh-huh. my parents were 94 years old, their families would sit around and listen to the radio. Oh, there were no yeah, TVs yeah. back then. Yeah. In the 1920s, 1930s. So they would get their news, weather, sports, shows, all came on the radio. Mm-hmm. And these are things from the old theater. So yeah, those things are from the 1930s, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah some even before that. The original opened up in 1913. And then in the 1990s, it closed for about 20 years, and then in 2018, it reopened. Yeah, I saw it. Street over Pike Street. No. Okay. And this, this piece is also from this building. From the original, yeah. Um, this exhibit is in honor of Dominion Energy, who donated this building to the Board of Education. So this tells about the history of oil and gas development in this area. Okay. This is a gas meter from 1890. So this gives a little bit of the history of Clarksburg here. The first um, residents were Native Americans, mm-hmm. the American Indians. So it dates back to, we have Oak Mounds over in Clarksburg. I don't know if you see the Oak Mound, but it's an Indian burial ground. This tells the story of the flag. There were five small towns that incorporated into Clarksburg. And we became a city in 1785. Named for General George Rogers Clark, he was a Revolutionary War General. We had lots of glass factories. We were the marble capital of the world. We made more marbles than any other city in the world in the 1920s and 1930s. We had a lot of immigrants that came from Belgium and France. And they started the first glass factories here in Clarksburg. And then all of these two shelves are, were from the marble factory. And these marbles here. And people still find marbles down, down here where the marble factory was. They still dig them up from the ground and they find them in the river banks. This tells a little history of our police department and our fire department. And so this tells the story of the mafia. So we, you know, we had a large Italian population, so the mafia was also here. They were called the Black Hand. So here they go around terrorize the hotel? Yeah, so they would, what they would do, they would go to the Italian immigrants and they would say, we will protect you for a certain amount of money. So the immigrants who owned the stores would have to pay the black hand uh-huh. to be protected. <laughs> I see. This is one of the biggest fires in Clarksburg at the Traders Hotel. We have a picture of this building over on another display. It was a beautiful building. It was a, Hotel, there were businesses in there, a restaurant, the theater was there. Mm-hmm. When it burned down in 1911, is when they built the new Robinson Grand Theater. Some items from the fire department and the police department. <clears throat> There's an old fire engine that was pulled by horses. That building is still there. It's actually right next door to this building. That building over there is the building we're in right now. This is called a Tommy. This is in honor of our West Virginia Italian Heritage Festival that we have in the city every year on Labor Day weekend. It's a three-day festival. So I heard it's one of the largest. It's one of the three top Italian festivals in the country. Yeah. It's about 100,000 people in the city. Oh, wow. The That's a really big uh, festival that we have in the city. Yeah. We have people that dress in the ethnic. Costumes. And there's dance troops, they do dance troops, there's plays, and there's lots of concerts. <clears throat> On Sunday, they have a mass, a church service outdoors. Mass service. It's really nice. Now, a lot of 
lot of immigrants from Italy um, came to this area because it reminded them of Italy with the mountains. And you've been in Italy, yeah. so in a lot of mountains, a lot of small towns, a lot of businesses here, like coal mines, they would advertise over in Italy to, to, for people to come here if they needed coal miners. And this is a pottery factory that we had in the area, and they would make um, this, this is the people China, and they would make this for the White House, mm -hmm. um, the embassies, the uh, big hotels in New York City, the U.S. Navy, which is this, this uh, China. So, so almost everyone in Clarksburg has a piece of like China in their house somewhere. This is part of our Harry Powers exhibit. Mm -hmm. He was um, a serial killer in 1931 who actually lived in this area. He immigrated here from um, the Netherlands. Oh, okay. <laughs> but he ended up here and um, he would write love letters. So it's kind of like people date on the internet now. Uh -huh. He would write love letters and they would exchange letters. And then um, the women would come here to meet him and then he would kill them. Wow. So there's what we call a murder farm out at Quiet Dow. It's a rural area outside of Clarksburg where they had um, what we call the murder farm. Mm -hmm. And so we just actually did a documentary on him, a docu documentary, documentary film at the Robinson Grant Theater. And then we brought people over here to see our exhibit. And then we actually took bus rides to the murder farm. 1931 is when they, when they finally checked me on. There was a family that was missing from Illinois, a woman and her three children uh -huh. were missing from Illinois. And that's when they tracked him down to this area. So how many people um, did So five people that they found at the murder farm. They think probably there were more, but they're not sure. He never said. They think in other areas of the country. He probably did the same thing. And we have his story right here. This is Calvin Coolidge. So is that 
his house, rather. That is the house where he lived in Clarksburg on Lee Avenue. Yes. Have you seen the movie Men in Black? based on this book. They knew too much about flying saucers. It was written by Gray Barker. And Gray Barker lived here in Clarksville. So the movie Men in Black was based on this book. And he wrote about uh, UFOs and aliens. Uh -huh. And actually if you over on the next street, on Pike Street, there's the Waldo Moore. It's a big, it's like a White House. Uh -huh. I don't know if you've seen that or been there. Up on the second floor they have a collection, a Gray Barker UFO writings and stuff. Uh, he was actually born in Braxton County, which is a little bit south of here on your way to Charleston. You go through Braxton County. Uh -huh. And this is the Braxton County monster, or the Flatwoods monster, that supposedly landed in 1952. This is Pete. Hello, nice meeting you. How are you doing? He's a historian, Rick, a very much accomplished guy. Let's ask him some questions. In the four years there, he went from being last to number 17 of a class of 59. And this, this class was a famous class, class of uh, 48. I'm sorry, class 46. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, many from that class were generals in the Union and Confederate Army during Civil War. Mm -hmm. um, he, um, he, his um, actions in the Shenandoah Valley during the Civil War um, are studied today at uh, the military uh, colleges, mm -hmm. military uh, uh, schools. Uh, they, they study his 1862 Valley Campaign where he, uh, through maneuver and um, uh, deception, he kept uh, three Union armies bottled up. Um, he would, uh, May 2nd, 1863, he is wounded while he is uh, during the Battle of Chancellorsville. He goes forward. It's a um, it, it's a day when it's very unusual because it there was a full moon. Mm -hmm. The moon was out an hour before sundown, and so he he could see real well. So he had his staff forward trying to reconnoiter, and uh, his as he was coming back through the lines, his mm -hmm. own men thought it was. Uh, Yankee uh, uh, staff coming through or Yankee uh, uh, um, scout mm -hmm. and um, he they fired on him he was wounded in the arm and in the hand um, he had his arm amputated it looked like he was going to be okay but um, he, he had pneumonia he probably had pneumonia that day mm -hmm. because he, he wore his overcoat and he wore his raincoat. He was cold and this was a 60 some degree day. So, wow. yeah. so he was probably sick mm -hmm. and then the wounding just masked the, um, uh, the symptoms for pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And on May 10th at Guinea Station, he, uh, he died there. Um, like I said, his, uh, his, his tactics that he used in the 1862 Shenandoah Valley campaign are studied still today. So, uh, so. Um, I know you know a lot about um, Stonewall Jackson. So, what was um, he like? As a, like he he uh, well <laughs> he he was very interesting. Uh -huh. After the Mexican War, he was breveted uh, major, uh -huh. promoted three times by brevet. He he was sent to. Uh, Virginia, or he went to Virginia Military Academy as an instructor. Uh -huh. He resigned from the Army, went there as an instructor. Well, he, he, he wasn't very good at reasoning. He would study, uh -huh. he would read his lesson, 
And then he would repeat everything from that lesson right back again. So if somebody asked him a question in the class, uh -huh. he would go back to that portion and repeat it right out of the book. Well, if they questioned, you know, if they wanted some more information and, uh -huh. and in depth why that is done, he, he would, uh, uh, he would chastise the individual for insubordination. So he was he was kind of a guy that if if you said, do you know what? I don't know if you understand this. A lot of people when they're talking said, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He would say, no, sir, I don't know what you mean. He, he wouldn't take it as, as, as it, he, was, he, was, he was a very, things were black and white to him. Uh -huh. he, yes or no. There was no gray. There was no in between. Um, he would, he's very eccentric. He would walk around sometimes with his arm in the air because he believed that uh, blood flowed to one side of his body and not to the other side. Uh -huh. He would um, he would do a um, uh, uh, aerobics routines going from class to class. Um, now it. A lot of books will talk about him eating lemons and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that is true. Where are you going to get lemons in the Shenandoah Valley? <laughs> um, persimmons, fruit, different kind of fruits. Uh, uh -huh. he, he would uh, he would eat that. Uh, he was he 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 drove his 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 men very hard, but they would march for 50 minutes mm -hmm. and they get a 10 minute rest. So that was pretty much standard. They knew it was going to be a hard march, but at the end of 50 minutes, he was going to give them 10-minute rest. And he did this. Uh, now, of course, in time of battle or something, you may not be able to do that. But uh, that was... Uh, so. Yeah, so like, how did he get the nickname Stinky? Okay. Um, at the Battle of First Manassas, uh -huh. July uh, 21st, 1861, he, w he uh, brought his men onto the battlefield. Uh -huh. the, the battle had been going on. He had come by train from uh, Harper's Ferry uh -huh. and come down into the Manassas, uh, on Manassas Gap Railroad, got his men off the train and marched them to the battlefield. When he saw all the battle going on out there, he was not going to send his men forward. He lined them up just over the crest of the hill, uh -huh. brought his artillery up, and waited. And he was fired from there. And uh, Colonel B mm -hmm. of uh, South Carolina saw him and told his men, said, Men, there's Jackson standing like a stone wall. Let's rally around the Virginians. That's so hard. that is how the Stonewall Jackson, that's how he got his nickname. Wow. Um, and so, like, um, he, after the, you know, the Civil War started, and since he, um, he you know, was supporting the, um, like, he, you know, he was on the other side. So um, his sister, was you know a strong supporter of the union. Well, you've done your homework, yeah. haven't you? <laughs> yes, I'm, his sister Laura Jackson, mm -hmm. Laura uh, Jackson Arnold. She uh -huh. married a guy by the name of Tom Arnold, who was a a Confederate sympathizer. They lived in Beverly, which is about seventy miles from here. Mm -hmm. um, now he would go visit his sister before the, when he was teaching at uh, VMI. Uh -huh. But uh, his, his sister was a union sympathizer. She was a nurse. Uh, she nursed uh, many of the uh, soldiers uh, that were wounded um, on both sides. But she, she, uh, she was definitely a very strong unionist. And um, people make a big deal out, well, they never spoke. Mm -hmm. The war was going on. How were they going to speak, you know? So... But, um, yeah, so um, like, had, um, I know that you know uh, his mother, right? Took, so his mother took him, and 
him and uh, his sister Laura to stay with the uncle. Uncle Cummings, Cummings Jackson, yes. yes. So like, um, did, you know, like after that, uh, did those um, kids speak with um, with the mother or, you know, did uh, Tom's um, and Laura speak with the mother after that or? Well, she died whenever she died. he was seven. They went to they went to visit uh, her uh, just before she died. Uh -huh. In um, it was down um, on the Gully River uh, mm -hmm. in Kanawha Valley, a um, um, place called Anstead. Um, but then uh, she died. They they came back and stayed at Jackson's Mill mm -hmm. and. Uh, they um, so they grew up there. I see. So um, he died in Virginia, and why why did uh, like then his family bring his um, body back um, here to bury? Uh, um, his wife and uh, a child mm -hmm. lived in um, in uh, Lexington, uh -huh. and and that he had been teaching there, so that's why he was buried in in uh, Lexington. See. And the rest of his family members, uh, they are buried here, right? Um, yeah, his mother is buried down Nanstead. Mm -hmm. His his father's buried here in Jackson Cemetery. Okay, I see. So, what was um, he like uh, as a, a general? Like, was he a, a strong leader? Oh, very strong leader. <laughs> um, gave very. Uh, very specific directions. Uh -huh. um, 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 expected his orders to be followed, mm -hmm. especially in battle. Uh, he he did not hesitate to uh, place uh, a uh, officer under arrest. He um, in January 1861. He went to Romney. Mm -hmm. Uh, during the, uh, uh, he left part of his army there, mm -hmm. and and he went back to Winchester. Uh, the uh, uh, person there, the general in charge of uh, the guys in Romney, was um, named w um, William Wing Loring. Mm -hmm. uh, Loring was. Uh, 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 a soldier during the Mexican War, he, he was he, he had one arm, mm -hmm. and uh, he just refused to stay there. It was a bad place. Plus, he kept saying they were going to be attacked. He was right. There, the lander was planning to attack him, so he brought the army back to Winchester. Mm -hmm. um, Jackson resigned over it um, because uh, Loring had. Uh, Asked the Secretary of War, and um, so they kind of settled Jackson down, got him to uh, uh, take back his resignation. Uh -huh. But he was a he was a very direct, uh, um, uh, strong leader. When when he said he was going to do something, he, he did it. To do it. So I know you mentioned that um, his his man like um, shot him, you know, by accident, right? Yes. The battle. So I um some of the people like um the, like they they think uh, like his man shot him on um, purpose. No, like, no. You would have no way. That. No. <laughs> I I've been I've been to where he was wounded. Uh huh. Um, I've walked that ground. In fact, I I went there the night that the uh -huh. moon was full. The moon was up an hour. Uh -huh. er everything was exactly the same as the night Jackson was wounded, um, and uh, you you could tell that. Uh, and he he'd, he'd gone forward. He uh -huh. had good guides, uh, uh, soldiers that had lived in that area, and uh, you know he just went forward, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, it looked like uh, the Yankees were on one side and that's what it, those men thought that uh, they were North Carolina troops and they thought that uh, there was Yankee patrol coming and they opened fire. So 
So it was. It, yeah, really it was. It was an definitely an accident. Okay. Definitely an accident. So um, one last question, like, um, how do local people feel about him? Like, um, well, you, you hear the name Stonewall Jackson, so mm -hmm. you know the the lake is named after him. Uh, um, um, I I I think. Um, some people um, look at him as a hometown hero. Mm -hmm. uh, some people look at him as uh, that uh, he went to the other side uh, and uh, he, he's a tra traitor. If you enjoyed this video, please put a thumb up and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time.